In this video, we're going to talk about multi-step equations that actually have variables on both sides of the equal sign. Okay, and the variable we're going to be dealing with is the same variable for now. So we're going to have an X or a Y or an A or a C or something on the left side of the equal sign and then the same variable on the right side of the equal sign. They're going to have different coefficients more than likely. Uh, so you're going to have to be ready to move one from one side to the other. To get started, we're actually going to model this using algebra tiles, okay? And the thing that I'm going to mainly show here is that what we're going to do is use inverse operations to get x on a side by itself. That's our goal, okay? We have x on both sides of the equal sign here. But even in ones where we only had x on one side of the equal sign, our goal was always to get x on a side all by itself. We don't want it being multiplied by anything. We don't want anything being added to it. Well, okay, let's model what this looks like using algebra tiles. Here's 4x plus 5. What's on the left? Those have 4x tiles and then 5 plus tiles, okay? On the other side, I have 2x plus 11. And I want to figure out what x has to be equal to to make this statement true. Okay, so here we are, each side of the equation. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to subtract my x tiles from the right-hand side of the equation. That's going to cancel out the positive x's with negative x tiles. If I do something to the right, I have to do something to the left. So I'm not just going to subtract 2x from the right, I'm also going to subtract 2x from the left. That's going to wipe out two of my x's. Now notice what happened here. I don't have any more x's on the right-hand side. I subtracted, I inverse operation to those x's right out of there. But I still have two x's on the left and x's on just one side of the equation. Now it's just a multi-step equation like we've solved in the past. Okay, so I added two negative x tiles, or I subtracted two x tiles from both sides. The next thing that I'm going to do now is subtract five tiles from the left, and if I do that, I need to subtract five tiles from the right. Uh, so this is adding negative tiles, but the negative tiles cancel the positive tiles, so I have no um, plus tiles left on this side. And I'm going to cancel out a bunch of my plus tiles on this side. So it's not going to be 2x plus 11. It's going to be, well, I got rid of my 2x's, and now I'm getting rid of 6 out of that 11. So there's going to be, I'm sorry, I'm getting rid of 5 of them. I'm sorry. So there's going to be 6 left. All right, once again, I added 5 negative 1 tiles to both sides, and that gives me some 0 pairs that I can get rid of. What am I left with? Well, 2x equals 6. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do when I have 2x equals 6, it's pretty simple to finish this up, um, I can arrange into two equal groups. Uh, when I arrange into two equal groups, I'm going to see that one of my x goes with 3, the other x goes with 3, and that means that x equals 3. The value of x is 3. Hey, let's just go check back at the beginning and make sure that works. 4 times 3 is 12, plus 5 is 17. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 11 is 17. This was a valid way to do it. Now, the only reason I, I modeled this with algebra tiles is to show you that we are using inverse operations to cancel things out on both sides of the equation. And really, the main goal is to get x on a side by itself. Now, there are two terms related to equations that have variables on both sides that you have to be familiar with because you're going to run into some problems that are weird. Okay, in this lesson, they're already going to come up. One of those problems is called an identity problem. If you are solving your equation, you get the equation 2 equals 2 or something similar. Does 2 equal 2? Yes, it's always equal to 2. doesn't matter what x is, 2 equals 2. Okay, if you get a number equal to itself, doesn't matter if it's 2, 5 equals 5, 8 equals 8, 100 equals 100. Uh, if you get any of those what, ha what it means is the equation is an infinite number of solutions. So you would say infinitely many solutions. There's also an impossibility. 2 equals 7, 3 equals 9, 5 equals negative 1. Okay, any of those are impossible because 2 does not equal 7. If you get 
an impossibility, that means the equation actually has no solutions. We'll look at some examples of that. Okay, let's take a look at some practice examples here. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is solve letter A. In letter A, I have 6x equals 3x plus 27. Uh, let's see here. The first thing I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to subtract 3x on both sides. How am I doing that? Well, that is the subtraction property of equality. I can use the subtraction property of equality uh, to use the inverse operation of positive 3x on this side. It's going to get rid of my 3x, and I have x on a side by itself. That was my main goal, is to get x on a side by itself to start off. So I have 3x equals 27. Well, this one's pretty easy. The next thing we're going to do is divide both sides by 3. Divided by 3, divided by 3. This is going to be the division property of equality. Okay, let's see if I can spell division right here. Spell check. All right, there we go. Um, 3x divided by 3 is simply x. 27 divided by 3 is 9. x equals 9. Uh, and that is my answer for letter A. Uh, I justified each step just like it asked me to. Letter B is going to be pretty simple as well. In letter B, we have 2 plus, let's see, let me just make this, 2 plus 3 times 3x minus 6 uh, equals 5 times x minus 3 plus 15. Now, the first thing I'm going to need to do is clean this one up because it is messy. Uh, so I am going to distribute this 3 in to these parentheses. I'm going to distribute this 5 into the parentheses. That's going to get rid of my extra um, terms that I can't really work with yet. So 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times negative 6 is minus 18. This side is going to be 5 times x equals 5x. Minus, let's see, 5 times 3 is 15. Now I'm going to combine like terms on both sides. Um, so let's see, I'm going to use, let's see here, I'm just going to note that I use the distributive property. And then next I'm going to combine like terms. So uh, let's see, this is going to become 2. I can combine 2 with minus 18 to become negative 16. 9x minus 16 on this side equals 5x minus 15 plus 15 is just 0. So that goes away. Okay. Now, um, I'm just going to say, by the way, uh, my step here was to simplify. Combining like terms is just simplifying. Boy, this is going to be a lot easier if I subtract 9x from both sides. I usually don't like making my x variable negative by subtracting. I, I would prefer if I could subtract 5x from both sides, but that's just going to cause problems because I have this 16 over here. If I subtracted 5x from both sides, um, I would end up with 4x minus 16 equals 0. Then I have to add 16 to both sides and then solve. I don't know that this is any easier but uh, we'll see if it works out. So this 9x minus 9x is 0. On this side, we have negative 16. Notice the negative doesn't go away. Equals negative 4x. 5x minus 9x is negative 4x. And to do that, I used the subtraction property of equality. Okay, and then lastly, if I... Divide both sides by negative 4. Um, so I'm just going to do it like this. Divide by negative 4. Divide by negative 4. Um, that's going to give me, and I'm just going to put my answer down here. Uh, that will be 4 equals x, or x equals 4. And to get that, I use the division property of equality. Okay, x equals 4. That's how I solve that one. Um, to check the solutions for both of these, all I would do is plug my number back into the original. 6 times 9 is 54. 3 times 9 is 27. 27 plus 27 is 54. Bam, it works. Let's try 4 for the next one. 3 times 4 is 12. Minus 6 is 6. 
times 3 is 18. Okay, I'm following order of operations. 2 plus 18 is 20. I got 20 on the left side. Let's try the other side. Uh, 4 minus 3 is 1 times 5 is 5 plus 15 is 20. So A and B are correct. Now let's move along to C. Um, and we will see what happens with this one. Um, I'm guessing this one's probably going to be one of those weird properties that we talked about, weird types of problems. But let's find out. So 2 times x plus 3 equals 3 times 2x plus 2 minus 4x. Um, okay, so I'm going to see if there's going to be a problem here. And first of all, we're going to distribute 2x plus 6 equals 6x plus 6 minus 4x. Now I'm going to combine like terms and simplify. I have nothing to combine on the left. On the right, I have a 6x minus a 4x. Because x is the same as x, they have the same variable set, I can combine those two. This is going to become 2x plus 6 equals uh, 2x plus 6. Hmm, I see something interesting on both sides of the equation. Notice that I have the same thing. Uh, let's see if I can go ahead and solve this. I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides as my next step. That's going to be 2x equals 2x. Um, I'm going to divide both sides by x because uh, I need to get x on a side by itself. So I'm going to uh, divide both sides by x and see what happens. Now notice this step we already noticed. We have the same thing on both sides of the equation. If I divide both things by x here, 2 equals 2, I get one of the things I noted up here, an identity. Actually, you have an identity the moment you notice you have the same thing on both sides of your equation. So letter C has infinitely many solutions because it doesn't matter what I plug in for X, it's always going to be true. If I plug in 2, it's going to be 4 equals 4. If I plug in 8, it's going to be 16 equals 16, right? All right, letter D. Um, 3 times X plus 4 equals 2 times X plus 5 plus X. Um, okay, let's see if we can solve this one. Distribute 3x plus 12 equals 2x plus 10 plus x. I'm going to combine like terms here. 3x plus 12, nothing to combine there. Uh, here, on the other side, I have 2x plus x, so that's 3x plus 10. Hmm, here I have a problem. Because notice I have 3x plus 12 equals 3x plus 10. Is there any value of x? where I can multiply it by the same thing, but then add a different number to it and actually get a true statement. Here's another way to think. What if I subtract 3x from both sides? If I subtract 3x from both sides in an attempt to get x on a side by itself, I end up canceling it on both sides. And I end up with 12 equals 10. Uh-oh, that's an impossibility. The equation has no solution. There is no value of x that will make these two sides equal. Just as up here, any value of x will make these two sides equal. All right, let's go to letter E. Uh, a fitness center has a membership fee of $125. Um, so I'm just going to be $125 to join. Members pay only $5 per day to work out at the center. A non-member pays $10 a day to work out. After how many workout days is the total cost for members, including the membership fee, the same as the total cost for non-members? So this is going to be $125 membership fee plus 5 times the number of days. That's how much a member is paying, okay? When does that equal what a non-member pays? 10 times the number of days. Hmm, okay, so I need to figure out what D equals. How many days is does it take to break even if I pay for a membership here? Uh, so what I'm going to do is subtract 5D from both sides. That'll give me 125 equals 5D. Notice I subtracted 5D from this side, subtracted 5D from this side. 10D minus 5D is 5D. Um, now I'm going to divide both sides by 5. That's going to be 25 equals D. It takes 25 days for it to cost the same amount for a member and a non-member. So as long as I'm going to work out more than 25 days on my membership, that makes it worthwhile. All right, that's how you solve these types of problems. You should be able to do it. Do numbers 1 through 30 in lesson 27.